Greeting adventurers, my name is Derekos Rux, and welcome to my Skyrim Special Edition modding journey. This is going to be documenting me restarting my mod list from scratch. So this mod list is going to be pretty extensive in the end, but one of the keystone mods we're going to be starting out with and kind of building everything around is called Proteus, which allows us through some like character editing magic essentially, allows you to play as different characters throughout the game and to save those character presets that you make and generate them as NPCs in your world, which you can then use as companions also. So the idea is going to be to create one game where potentially a lot of different characters, potentially a dozen, uh, do all of the different stories throughout Skyrim as opposed to you know, one character doing so much stuff as is usually the case. So there's a million guides in this already, so I'm not going to delve into it. But if you're watching this and you're just starting, um, I am using Vortex. You can just Google search Vortex install, Vortex Mod Manager, and download the latest version. You'll install it, and then you'll get something that looks like this. After you install Vortex and have the Elder Scrolls Special Edition installed on your computer, you want to make sure you uh, run it once to like generate the files in the directory or something. I don't know. That's beyond my knowledge, but I believe that is still the case. I would just do it, and then you can just close out. And then in here, you may have to come to games and search for the game, and then you'll click here on it, and you'll select to manage it. The only, I think the only, if I change my mind, I will, but I think the only link I'm providing in the description is this one. Um, this is the link to the SKSE64 and SkyUI installation guide. Uh, these are two fundamental mods you need for almost everything, and they're so instrumental that they're, you just want to get them off the bat. There's no, no use trying not to have them or anything. Um, so this guide goes through it all. Uh, so I'm going to be showing you starting from scratch using Vortex, a lot of people recommend using Mod Organizer too. It uh, has a tutorial here for that instead, if you want that. And you know, there's a million things on YouTube as well. So after you read through everything here, and uh, there's an important bit at the bottom here, especially about your game directory not being in the program files times eighty six folder, um, and there is a guide here that will show you how to change your uh, Steam library where your game directory is. And then, of course, you will want something like Renoir, Renoir or 7-Zip. All right, go ahead and open up this link under the Downloading SKSC64 section. Uh, you'll see there's a bunch of different versions, and it has directions here on how to find which version yours is. If you uh, have Skyrim Special Edition on Steam, then it's probably going to be this one right here. But you know, as as to build good habits, why not follow these directions here? Find the Skyrim SE.exe and look in the details under the properties and make sure that it does match uh, this number here. And as long as it does, then you go to the Skyrim Script Extender page, find that version, download it. Go to your downloads. Here it is right there. And all you have to do is open up Vortex alongside it. Click it here and just drag it right here. And it will go ahead and install it for you. As far as I've seen, Vortex always automatically enables and then redeploys all of your mods and everything. But you'll see all the time, make sure it's enabled, which in Vortex means that it's green and has the check mark and everything. And then whenever you install a new mod and want to start up the game to make sure that that mod is working, which you should always do, don't install a bunch of mods and then expect them all to work together without any uh, homework or anything. Uh, but anytime you do that, you want to deploy mods, and that'll just make sure that everything is working correctly. So after you have installed SKSE64 and it's enabled here, uh, just as a note, this warning here, this is just telling you there is no source, and the source in this case is uh, 
Vortex, everything is on Nexus. And so most mods that you install through the Nexus have a source and Vortex can tell you like when there's an update or something <clears throat> for mods that you have installed. So we have SKA64 installed. Make sure you read everything, guys. I'm not doing it. You do it. I've already done it. <laughs> oh, right. And this is just showing you, just as an example, this is the install directions for with Vortex, and this is the install directions without. I'm not uh, sure if it's also as easy with Mod Organizer 2 or not. It doesn't say. And anyways, after you have that installed, you come down to the Installing Sky UI section, and there is just one version like modern version of sky ui that if you read the beginning section works for all modern versions of skyrim special edition you can go ahead and just open that in a new tab and this will be your first normal nexus mod that you install now as good practice look at the mod page read the mod page okay some of them are very long you can try to specifically look for things like installation instructions compatibility notes patches that kind of thing <clears throat> but you know you want to read as much as you can you want to put in the work now because otherwise you're gonna have to put in more work later come here to the requirements section you can see under requirements the only thing this requires is and again that was important up in this section the proper version of skse 64 for your skyrim special edition game version as long as that's right, everything should work right. And so you have the requirement for the mod you want. You've read the installation instructions. You know, in this case, they're here, but usually on the mod page. They might also be on like a wiki or something. Now this time, instead of doing a manual download and a drag and drop thing, you can just hit mod manager download. This reminds you that there is a requirement. You already have it. So just go to download and you'll hit slow download. That'll open whatever your normal download window is. And when it's done, you'll see it uh, finished in here. And again, for me, normally they automatically uh, install and enable themselves. If they don't, just make sure it is. Make sure it just looks like this is all there is to it. Um, and you can see here, I already have SkyUI 5.2 for special edition. And that's really it for the beginning. Now, I believe this is set up this way by default, but I may be wrong. But once you have Script Extender installed, you can make sure it is the primary. And that means that this play button up here will run Skyrim, will run the extender, uh, which is how you run the game now. You do not run it from Steam. No. Big green play button, bad. Little white play button, good. <laughs> That'll open this exe instead, which then does magic science things to make everything work. And since we have installed a mod, just to practice, let's go ahead and you should do what you always do. Get into your game and start a new game. There are a lot of mods you can install during a game. I don't tend to like to do that too much unless they're very safe things like textures or new spells. Uh, there's a long list of things that are fine, but you install a new mod. You always want to boot up the game real quick. Make sure you're not getting a crash to desktop when you load into the game. Um, and then preferably try to use whatever it is that you just installed. If it's like a new area, go to that area, use like the doors to the interior cell spaces that might be there. Where are they taking um, us? You know, just do a quick look around to make sure everything at least looks like it's working as intended so far. And that's where we're going to leave off for now. Uh, next time we're going to install the mods that I know that are easy and that are going to be staple mods. And uh, using like my old download history, uh, I'm going to go through and kind of organize the mods because I'm going to save things like animation mods and mods that use like big patchers for compatibility and stuff. I'm going to save a lot of that stuff for last so I don't have, so I'm not like repatching compatibility stuff over and over again. So uh, that will be what we do next. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, I look forward to building this awesome mod list with you. Thanks.